أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد uh, today <coughs> as I was uh, going through some of the news uh, articles uh, I came across a couple of articles that were a little disturbing to me. Um, the first one was that uh, I think in Pennsylvania uh, there was a man who uh, he, in, he killed uh, his wife uh, and he killed himself. <clears throat> uh, then I read another article um, that I came across that mentioned that since the... Um, uh, break of the coronavirus pandemic that uh, domestic abuse uh, is on the rise. Now, <clears throat> neither one of these articles mention anything about uh, the Muslims specifically. Uh, however, um, I do know that uh, and I have uh, personal knowledge that uh, domestic abuse <clears throat> does take place uh, within the Muslim community, as I have uh, dealt with multiple cases throughout the years, uh, some worse than others. Um, and I wanted to take this time uh, to just uh, remind uh, the brothers of some verses of the Quran and remind them of some of the ahadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us in the Quran that the reminder benefits uh, the believer <clears throat> and so I say with Allah's, with Allah's uh, permission after Allah's permission subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, first and foremost Allah mentions in the Quran that he created everything in pairs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created everything uh, in pairs, uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, "وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ." And from everything we created in pairs, that you may remember. And Al Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah Taala, he says in his tafsir, in giving examples of the pairs that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, he said, he, Allah created the heaven and the earth. Allah created the night and the day, the sun and the moon. He created the land and the sea, light and dark. He created uh, iman and kufr, uh, life and death, happiness and sadness, jannah, the hellfire. Uh, and Allah Azza wa Jalla, we look at the animals, we look at the plants, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in pairs. Even the human being was created in pairs. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Najm, where he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَنَّهُ خَلَقَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى And that he created uh, the two pairs, or he created the pairs, the male and the female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also he says in the beginning of Surah Al-Nisa, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا O oh, humanity, worship your Lord, the one who created uh, you from a single soul and created from it its mate. And so here we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created everything in pairs. Even the human being was created as a pair. And so from that which uh, from the necessities of the creation of pairs is that in, that we live to actualize what we were created in pairs to do from the wisdom and from the, the from that which it necessitates the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal created us in pairs it necessitates that we actualize the reason why we were created in pairs. 
And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the male and the female, He created us in pairs, is so that we can marry. That we can marry. Allah azza wa jal, He says in the Quran, Fankihu ma taba lakum min an nisa. Marry, and this is a command from Allah azza wa jal, marry those that please you from the women. Marry women. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith that you can find in the sahih of al-imam al-Bukhari, as well as in the sahih of al-imam Muslim, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawwaj. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O you young men, Whoever from amongst you has the ability to get married, then let him get married. <coughs> then let him get married. And so we see that this is uh, the command to get married is from uh, the command of Allah and the command of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from the sunan of the messengers. It is a sunnah of the messengers that they got married. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah, surah number 13, Allah azza wa jal, He says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً And indeed, we sent before you messengers, or we sent messengers before you, and we made for them wives and offspring. We made for them wives, we gave them wives and offspring. And so, the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they got married, they had children, and we know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, he got married, and he had children, and so this, uh, we were created in pairs, we were created for one another. It is a command from Allah, and a command from His Messenger alaihi salatu wasallam. It is from the Sunan of uh, the messengers that Allah has sent uh, to get married. And so uh, we see that this is an encouragement from our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to get married. Um, but what is the purpose? Uh, what is the reason <coughs> for uh, this marriage? What are the goals or what are the outcomes? Well, the goal, one of the goals and one of the important goals is companionship. One of the important goals is companionship. And one of the important goals is for the two or for the couple to find tranquility, to find love and affection in the other, to find closeness, to find uh, mercy and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran in Surah uh, number 30, Allah Azza wa Jal He says. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah Ta'ala He says, and from His signs, meaning from the signs of Allah, and from His signs is that He has created for you from yourselves mates, meaning wives, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا that you may find tranquility in her. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And he has placed between you affection and mercy. He's placed between you affection and mercy. And indeed in that, meaning in the fact that he's created for you wives, the fact that he's made for you uh, in that relationship, he's made for you love, he's made for you affection, he's made for you mercy. Indeed in that is a sign for the people who will reflect. And so those of us men, those of us brothers, who are from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with marriage, then this is this marriage is a bounty and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal has given you something has given, has instituted for you 
and has blessed you with a tool that you will be able to find comfort. You will be able to find tranquility and love and affection and mercy. You'll be able to find that in the relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with in the woman that you call your wife. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you responsible, O brother, O husband. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you responsible to act and to behave in a particular manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you responsible to act and to behave in a particular manner as it relates to your relationship with your wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an in Surah An-Nisa, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah ta'ala, He says, and live with them in that which is known, meaning live with them in kindness. Live with them in kindness. Live with them in that which is known and customary. And this tafsir, Al-Imam Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when he explained what it means to live with your wife, and what, with what is known, to live with her in kindness, he said that that means, طَيِّبُوا أَقْوَالَكُمْ وَحَسِّنُوا أَفْعَالَكُمْ He said that living with her in kindness, living with her and with that which is known, what that means is for you to make your speech with her good. To make your speech, speech with her that is good. And your actions, actions that are good. طَيِّبُوا أَقْوَالَكُمْ وَحَسِّنُوا أَفْعَالَكُمْ Make your speech good. Talk to her with good speech. And behave with her in, with manners of goodness. Meaning when you choose to say things, is, is at times you want to say something and there, there are different ways that you can say things. There are different ways. One way you can say it and it's harsh. One way that you can say something and it's easy and acceptable and kind. So it's multiple ways that you can say things. Choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you brother, Husband, Allah has ordered you to choose the good words. Say what you need to say. Choosing good words. Do what you need to do. Choosing good actions. And this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has made you responsible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you responsible for dealing with with your wife in a way that is good in your speech how you talk to her then how you choose to even call her what names are you using what kind of name are you using are you calling her with good names pet names different names that make her smile make her heart flutter when you say that name or are you choosing names that make her heart feel tight, and make her uncomfortable, make her feel belittled. How are you even calling? How are you speaking to her? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you, O brother, O husband, Allah has ordered you to speak to her in goodness, to deal with her in goodness, to be kind to her. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَأَمْسَاكٌ bi'ma'ruf. Then keep her in kindness or release her in kindness. We either keep her in kindness or we, or we release her in kindness. So as long as, as long as the two of you are husband and wife, then you are responsible by the command of Allah by the command of Allah in the Quran that he revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are responsible to treat her in your speech and in your action with kindness and with goodness because the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
creating us in pairs is for us to get married and for us to find tranquility in one another to find compassion and love and mercy in one another so someone may say uh, what if she makes mistakes or what if she does something that I don't like we say that's fine okay and we understand that however as long as your wife is obedient if she's being obedient you ask her is she obedient or is she disobedient you say no she's obedient then we do not seek a means over her to be oppressive we don't go around nitpicking at every time every little thing because how we deal with others is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, in surah an-nisa he says fa in ata'nakum fala tabghu alayhinna sabila inna Allah kana aliyan kabira fa in ata'nakum fala tabghu alayhinna sabila and if they are obedient to you then do not seek a means against them if they are obedient to you then do not seek a means against them meaning don't go around looking for problems. Don't go around trying to find fault. Don't pick out every little detail, every little thing that you see. Something was left out. Maybe she forgot to do something. Maybe you asked her for this and she didn't do it by mistake. Don't go around trying to make everything a big deal. Why? Why shouldn't you do that? Inna Allah kana aliyan kabira, because Allah is the lofty and the mighty. Allah subhanahu wa taala. You don't want Allah azza wa jal picking out and holding you, O oh brother, O oh husband. You don't want Allah subhanahu wa taala holding you accountable for every single mistake that you make. You don't want Allah subhanahu wa taala holding you accountable. For every single time that you make an error, that you make a mistake, you don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holding you accountable for that. And so know for certainty that if you go around following behind your wife, nitpicking at every little thing, making everything a big deal, making everything as though the dunya is about to be over with, making, making everything that she does as though she's committed kufr then know for certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the mighty and he is the great and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who is watching over all of the affairs and he is the one who has the ability to hold you accountable for every single mistake that you make and you don't want Allah to hold you accountable for every mistake you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be merciful. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook and to forgive. Then you yourself, brother, husband, you overlook and you forgive. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman irhamu man fil ard yarhamkum man fil sama. Allah ta'ala says that the mercy givers our Rahman will show them mercy. So you people show mercy to those who are on the earth, then the one who is above the sky, he will show mercy to you. So this shows us that as we deal with people, the way that we deal with others, which includes our wives, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with us that way. You want Allah to be merciful to you? You want Allah to overlook your faults? You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you of your mistakes? Then you be merciful. You be kind. You overlook. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mighty and he is the great. Allah azza wa jal, he tells us that this marriage is a covenant. <coughs> this marriage is a covenant. Allah azza wa jal, he says, وَكَيْفَ وَكَيْفَ تَأْخُذُونَهُ وَقَدْ أَفْضَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيظًا And how can you take away from them, meaning don't the, the, the mahar, the dowry, how can you take that away from them when you have come in upon one another, 
wa akhadna minkum mithaqan ghaliza and those women the wives your wives have taken from you a solemn covenant those wives took from you a solemn covenant that woman she gave herself to you she gave herself to you her mind her body she gave herself to you she's obedient to you she's following your leadership only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered her to do so she's only trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being obedient to you she may not even agree with you she may not even like some of the decisions that you make but she's trying she's trying to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because she took from you a solemn covenant so this is a covenant that has brought the two of you together so know and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brother husband Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold you accountable so deal with your wife in kindness treat your wife <clears throat> with goodness deal with her with ease because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he loves when things are dealt with with ease as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in the hadith that you can find in the sahih of al imam al bukhari inna allah yuhibbu ar rifqa fil amri kullih indeed allah loves that ease is involved in every affair uh, in the sahih of al bukhari in muslim uh, one time there is narrated that one time the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he was riding um, he was riding in, uh, in in a caravan he was traveling and sometimes the women would travel with them and um, at that time the women would ride inside of a um, it's in arabic it's called a hodaj um, i don't know what we would call that in in english it's, i guess it's sort of like a little tent type of thing <clears throat> i don't know how to describe it but it's kind of like a, a small tent they would put on top of the of the camel they would put like the women would not ride on the camels the way that the men like outwardly they would put like a small tent type of structure on top of the camel and then the women would ride inside of that they would be inside so they would be enclosed they would be inside now <clears throat> now in some and then when you're traveling when the camel trots just like if if a, if a horse were to trot or whatever then it would move it would bounce up and down and so when they bounce up and down then the hodaj that the women were in would bounce also up and down and would cause them to do like this right and so uh, the camels they trot to poetry they trot to poetry and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, one of the poets during the time of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam his name was anjasha one of his names was anjasha and so anjasha he would recite poetry and the animals or the camels would trot to the poetry or to the rhythm of the poetry that uh, anjasha was reciting and so one at one point anjasha started reciting some poetry and he started to go a little bit fast and so uh the camels started to go a little bit fast and so as i mentioned the hodaj would start to they the camels would start to bounce the hodaj would start to bounce and in turn the women inside would bounce be bouncing up and down with them so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ya anjasha ruwaydak rifqan bil qawarir rifqan bil qawarir he said oh anjasha slow down be easy with the glass vessels he said oh anjasha slow down take it easy with the glass vessels and notice that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he called the women glass vessels take it easy deal with them easy they're like glass vessels what happens if you toss a, a glass vessel was is if you and it lands and hits the ground it's going to break be easy ya anjasha ruwaydak slow down rifqan bil qawarir be easy with the glass vessels 
The Prophet wasallam he called them glass vessels. And just like if you had some precious crystal glass that when you move it around, you're, you're very careful not to move it too hard. You don't want to break it. Likewise, when we're dealing with our wives, this woman loves you. This woman cares about you. If you were sick, she would, she would clean you up. You clean up your vomit. She would clean up your urine and your feces. When you can't take care of yourself, she'll be there for you. Be easy with her. Be kind to her. Don't be rough and tough like you're dealing with one of the brothers out in the streets. Now, I want to say just one thing, because one of the things that I noticed, and this is just something, <coughs> excuse me, that I noticed personally. Uh, I'm not going to say that this is the case for everybody, but it just so happens that in all of the cases that I've ever dealt with when it comes to marital abuse, where the man is abusing the woman, it, the brother is a man who you would never have thought because when he comes around other men, he acts real soft and gentle. But when he goes home uh, and he's with his wife, he acts like he's rough and tough. And this is something that is a quality of weakness. It's not a quality of strength. So, oh husbands, be kind, be easy, be, 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 be good, use good speech and good actions with your wives as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanded. And do not, uh, do not make your wives afraid of you. Do not make your wives afraid of you. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also mentioned the hadith in Bukhari, we said, الرَّجُلُ رَاعَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ الرَّاعَ فِي أَهْلِهِ وَهُوْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ He said, a man is the leader, he's the shepherd of his family. I mean, he's responsible. Meaning the, the, the husband, the wife, and the children are supposed to look to him for leadership. They're supposed to look for him for uh, 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 guidance. Meaning he's supposed to be able to show them directions in their religion, in their uh, dunya affairs, decisions about money, decisions about uh, schooling, decisions about uh, education, or decisions about just different affairs. He's responsible for that. And they're supposed to feel good and look to him for this religious guidance and for this um, the secular guidance, he's supposed to be their leader. The Prophet said that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, الرَّجُلُ رَاعٍ فِي أَهْلِهِ The man is the shepherd in his family. He's their leader. How can he lead properly if the people he's leading are afraid of him because of how he treats them? How can they take from him guidance how can he be an example for them if he's making them afraid by the, the way that he talks and yells and calls names or maybe even worse than that, striking her, beating her. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our women. I've even seen weapons being or hurt, uh, dealt with cases where there was weapons drawn. Um, all of this is in opposition to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and is in opposition to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he mentioned uh, in the Hadith, it's in Bukhari. <coughs> um, and if you have Sahih al-Bukhari, brother, if you have Sahih al-Bukhari, I want you to go look at this Hadith. It's Hadith number 6042. 6042 in Sahih al-Bukhari you take a look at this hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said bima yadribu ahadukum imra'atahu darb al-fahl thumma la'allahu yu'aniquha he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam why would a man and this is a blame this is he's blaming because in one narration he said la la tadribu or la yadrib ahadukum he prohibits in one narration he's prohibiting but in this particular narration, he says, why would one of you, uh, why, would it, why would a man beat his wife the way that he would beat his animal and then turn around and want to be up underneath of her? In another narration, ثُمَّ يُجَامِعُهَا ثُمَّ يُضَاعِجُهَا In one narration he says, then he would 
have marital relations with her. And then when that narration, he says, then he would uh, uh, sleep with her. And Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of this hadith, <coughs> he said that one of the things that we benefit from this hadith is that uh, these marital relations, marital relations, is supposed to be something that is mutually consentable, meaning that is something that the, the husband wants and that the wife wants. However, the Prophet ﷺ is blaming the husband who beats up on his wife the way he beats up on an animal. Then he turns around and he wants to go and, and go to bed with her. This is blameworthy. Do you think that she wants to be next to you? Do you think that she wants to see you? This is very blameworthy. And the Prophet ﷺ blamed the husbands that behave in this manner. He blamed the husbands that behave in this manner. And so know for certainty, O brother, O husband, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in the Quran, speaking about speaking to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, فَبِمَا لِنْتَ لَهُمْ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Allah Ta'ala, he says, and by Allah's mercy, you were kind to them. Meaning to the Sahaba. Allah speaking to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah's mercy, you were kind to them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ And if you were harsh and hard-hearted, لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would have fled from around you. And so, the Sahaba who believed, the Sahaba who believed that revelation was descending upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they believed he was the messenger of Allah. They believed that. And still, Allah said, if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have fled from around you. Even though they believe that you're the messenger of Allah. They believe that you had the truth. But if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have fled from around you. Why? Because nobody wants to be around someone who's harsh. Even if they have the truth. Even if they have the truth. No one wants to be around someone who's always being harsh and critical. He's hard-hearted. He's not kind. It's not understanding. It's not compassionate. Who would want to be around that? And so I say to myself, as a, me being a husband myself, and my ears are closer to my mouth than yours are, I say this as a reminder to myself, and I say this as a reminder to all the brothers who are listening, who ever see this video. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in pairs. He's created us to get married. And He's created us to get married so that we may find peace and tranquility, compassion, affection and mercy in our relationships. And as the leader of your household, as the leader of your household, your house is going to be as you make it. You're the leader. You're the one in charge, right? Then if you do not have peace and tranquility in that household, then you need to see what you need to do in order to have that peace and tranquility in your household. If there's a problem within you, then that needs to be fixed. So I advise myself and I advise all of us, be kind to your wives. Be easy going with your wives. This is a hard time that we're going through right now. It's difficult. We're used to being out of the house for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, some of us, and now we're in a small confined space where we're having to be in each other's face all the time. And sometimes that may be a little difficult. But, the, but at the end of the day, you being the leader, the responsibility rests on your shoulder. Lead your family in kindness. Lead your family in goodness, in compassion. Show them through your speech. Show them through your action what it means to be kind and forgiving what it means to be compassionate. Show them the way. Lead them through your speech and lead them through your action. 
This is the command of Allah, and this is the command of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was the perfect example. We don't have any examples of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam being harsh and hard-hearted when dealing with his wives. We have no examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, speaking ill towards his wives, treating his wife, treating his wives ill, or behaving in a manner of disrespect. We have no example, but rather what we have are examples of respect. We have an example of kindness and forgiveness and ease. So follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Be good to your wife. Be kind to your wife. Be compassionate. Be forgiving and overlook. Because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. So I say to myself and I say to all of us, let's heed the reminder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us all on the straight path. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us of our faults. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlook our mistakes. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, fix the defects within our character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He make our wives patient with us while we fix ourselves, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow our wives to forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our wives to overlook our faults. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah azza wa jalla protect us from getting sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the trials and tribulations of this life and the trials and tribulations of the next life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the punishments of the grave and the punishments of the hellfire. And ask our Lord the Most High to enter us all into Jannah. Hatha wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.